You have probably heard experts tell you that the secret to a solid, resilient body is to take walks or do light exercise every day, even to walk 10 kilometers a day to build muscle and prevent muscle loss. Some people get discouraged and quit halfway, or they keep at it but still do not see good results. Here is the reason. Muscle does not grow from movement alone. It grows when it is challenged by resistance. Some professionals may advise you to eat this or that to build muscle. The truth is, it may not defeat muscle loss or build muscle unless you also combine the exercises that stimulate the building process into your daily routine. When it comes to resistance, you do not have to go to extremes. You do not need heavy lifting at the gym, and you do not need to stick to light activity like walking. Training too hard is a serious mistake that raises your risk of injury, and recovery in people over 60 is limited. In the worst case, it can lead to being bedridden. On the other hand, if training is too light, your body never reaches the threshold where the muscles receive a strong enough signal to grow. For these reasons, in this video, I will give you the two most practical exercises you can do entirely at home. No gym, no walking 10 kilometers, no resistance bands. Yet these two moves solve the core problem of building muscle. Electromyography studies show they can be 2 to 15 times more effective depending on the muscle groups involved, especially the arms, shoulders, and back. I will introduce the two exercises in order, from the simplest to the stronger and more focused, with clearer results. They have helped thousands of patients recover in a short time. I will also reveal three exercises to limit or skip altogether, which you may still be doing but which do not serve your muscle building goals at your age. Hit the subscribe button if you have not already. Let's begin. Exercise 1. Wall Push-Ups. When you run, you can use more than 100 different muscles across the legs, trunk, arms, and shoulders. The legs do most of the work, but the downside is that running still activates less than a fraction of those muscles' effective capacity. In other words, the muscles are not facing resistance and are not truly challenged. In contrast, wall push-ups focus activation on the chest, core, shoulders, and triceps up to about 50%, even double that depending on your body angle. That is the difference compared with light walking. Wall push-ups create pressure that gives your muscles a strong enough signal to grow. More importantly, they teach your body to keep a straight line from head to heels while your arms move, a crucial skill to protect the shoulders and neck from strain. Under strong tension, muscle fibers develop tiny micro tears. That triggers recovery signals that make the muscle widen and thicken. That is what an exercise needs to help muscle rebuild. What happens when we do this exercise? It activates the process that converts mechanical forces in training into biological signals, changing genes, proteins, and tissue structure. In other words, wall push-ups at the right intensity and difficulty stimulate the target muscles to send biological signals so your body recognizes and responds, allowing your DNA to build more muscle and new tissue. For people over 60, this is one of the best things you can do. It can change your life. A program for older adults from NIA at the NIH, United States. The National Institute on Aging gives a detailed wall push-up guide. Stand more than an arm's length from the wall, hands at shoulder height, and repeat 10 to 15 times. The results include better function, better metabolic health, better sleep, improved blood pressure, and better overall fitness. As you lower the hand surface from wall to countertop to floor push-ups, the effects become clearer in a short time. Of course, we start with wall push-ups and increase difficulty step by step. Here is how. Stand an arm's length from the wall. Place both hands on the wall a little wider than shoulder width, fingers pointing upward, feet hip width apart. Inhale, bend your elbows and slowly bring your chest toward the wall. Keep your body in a straight line. When your nose is close to the wall, pause for half a second. Exhale, press back to the starting position. Arms straight, but do not lock the elbows. That is one complete rep. Repeat 10 times. If it is too easy, step farther away to increase difficulty. If it is too hard, step closer. Train three days per week on non-consecutive days, 
for example, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you can slow the lowering phase to a three count and the pressing phase to a two count. Time under tension is your secret weapon to build muscle without stressing the joints. When wall push-ups feel easy, move to the kitchen counter, then to a sturdy lower table or the back of a heavy sofa. Each lower surface increases the amount of body weight you must push. The goal here is strength for daily life, not showing off. A gentle controlled burn in the muscles is a good sign. If you feel sharp pain or pain spreading into a joint, stop and reduce the difficulty. If you have a knee replacement or severe arthritis, shorten the range of motion to a comfortable level and focus on sending the hips back. If you get dizzy when you stand up, move slowly and pause upright for a moment before walking. If you are worried about balance, set up in a doorway or near a countertop so you can hold on if needed. Wall push-ups are a great start for the upper body, but if you do only this one move, your muscles will not progress much. The reason is simple. It does not train the lower body. Your legs are the pillars that support you for life. Weak legs mean a higher risk of falls and complications. The next step should be the chair squat. Walking is good for general health, but it does not load the legs enough to stimulate growth. Chair squats are among the simplest yet strongest exercises to keep your legs healthy and to help you live independently as you age. With the single action of sitting down and standing up with proper form, you activate the quadriceps, glutes, hamstrings, and calves at the same time. The key muscles for standing up, climbing stairs, keeping balance, and preventing falls. In older adults, these are the muscles most easily lost and the ones that decide whether you can be independent or need help each day. That is why chair squats are more than an exercise. They are a test of dignity and self-reliance. Many studies show that when done regularly, chair squats can increase leg strength in just a few weeks, improve the speed of standing up, raise balance scores, and clearly reduce fall risk. Because they recruit many large muscle groups, Chair squats also prompt your body to produce a modest rise in growth hormone and testosterone, even in older adults. That helps maintain muscle mass, bone density, and recovery capacity. All you need is a sturdy chair. Start by sitting tall, arms crossed in front of your chest. Stand up quickly but under control, then sit down slowly. Perform 10 to 15 repetitions per session, 3 to 4 sessions per week, and you will notice the difference. Standard and safe method for older adults, set up. Choose a sturdy chair without wheels and with a non-slippery seat. If you are unsure, place it against a wall. A seat height around 17 to 18 inches is ideal for most adults. Stand in front of the seat with feet shoulder width apart. Turn the toes slightly outward for comfortable hips and knees. Extend both arms forward at chest height for balance. Look straight ahead. Keep the spine neutral. Do not round. Do not overarch. How to perform. Move slowly and with control. Send the hips back as if reaching for the chair. Let the knees bend naturally but keep them aligned with the toes. Do not let them cave inward. When the hips lightly touch the seat, pause for half a second. Then, press the heels firmly into the floor. Stand up using leg strength, not by pulling with the back. At the top, gently squeeze the glutes and keep the chest open. Breathe in as you lower, breathe out as you stand. Keep most of your weight on the heels and midfoot. Avoid shifting onto the toes to protect the knees and maintain balance. Start with 10 to 12 repetitions per session. Rest for 90 seconds between sets. Do three sets per session. If you need to sit fully between repetitions, that is fine as long as you keep the pace slow and controlled. Aim for four sessions per week, for example, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. The higher frequency is intentional. Compared with the upper body, the legs often recover faster and tolerate a slightly denser schedule, as long as your technique is correct. You can do perfect wall push-ups and chair squats every day, but if you are still doing the three exercises below, all your effort can be wiped out. They do not just slow progress, they raise injury risk in the lower back, shoulders, and knees, the areas older adults must protect most. 1. Traditional sit-ups and crunches. We often think sit-ups tighten the waist and strengthen the core. 
In reality, every time you curl the spine forward, you add compression to the discs, especially in the lumbar spine and the neck, which are already vulnerable with age. In people over 60, unsupervised repeated sit-ups can lead to low back pain, leg tingling, and reduced mobility for four to six weeks. Safer alternatives, bird dog, high plank with hands on a table, or the McGill curl up. These moves keep the spine neutral and build core strength without disc compression. Two, behind the neck shoulder press. You may see this in older workout plans, pressing weights up from behind the head. Yes, it activates the shoulders, but this position forces the joint into extreme external rotation, which can overload the rotator cuff. With age, the cuff thins and inflames more easily. A small mistake with behind the neck pressing can cause chronic shoulder pain, limit overhead reach, and stop all upper body training. Safer alternatives. Front overhead press, landmine press, or light lateral raises. These develop the shoulders along natural joint mechanics with much lower risk. Three, deep leg extensions on the machine with heavy weight. You sit and extend the knees against resistance. It seems simple, but it creates large shear forces at the knee, especially when you lock out or use heavy loads. In arthritic knees, this can create cumulative microtrauma and lasting pain. Better choices, chair squats, low step ups with support, or if you must use the extension machine, go light, avoid full lockout, and keep the range from about 90 to 45 degrees. Why avoid these three? Because even a small injury in the back, shoulder, or knee can sideline you for weeks or months. In older adults, time off means quick muscle loss, poorer balance, and a higher risk of falls. Preventing risk from the start is the smart way to protect your results and keep your independence. So what actually determines whether you will build muscle? Not the number of exercises and not the number of reps. The truth is, after age 60, muscle building comes from two pillars. Sound nutrition, enough high quality protein spread across the day, usually 25 to 35 grams per meal, so your muscles have the raw materials to rebuild. Proper training, prioritize large muscle group movements with control and steady progression, and do not miss this. Tomorrow I will share a very important nutrient that more than 70% of older adults are missing. This deficiency quietly blocks muscle gains even when you eat and train well. This may be the missing piece you have overlooked. Please subscribe now, turn on notifications, and make sure you do not miss the next video. In summary, avoid the three risky moves, spinal curl sit-ups and crunches, behind the neck pressing, and heavy deep leg extensions. Choose safer alternatives and practice them with correct form. Pair your training with adequate protein. Start today. Every day you delay is another day your muscles continue to shrink. Train smart, eat the right way. You will feel your strength return.